Hokies win it tonight, 76-68 over Georgia Tech, improving for the first time under head coach Buzz Williams to 8-4 and four in the ACC. And coach, certainly Georgia Tech was game tonight and gave you a fight. How did the guys and your level of pride and how they handled runs and that chippiness from Georgia Tech to ultimately prevail this evening? I thought we played uh, really well in many respects. I did not think that um, that last the last two ATOs of the first half, we were very good. I thought we got away from the th specific recipe that gave us a chance to win. You know, I think with, um, first of all, it's, uh, we're playing them for the second time. Obviously, our team is different. But we're, we're in a, to an extent, I think with each passing day, we're figuring out the specific recipe to what gives us a chance and it's so specific that when the ingredients or the directions for the recipe are not followed exactly to that the walls are going to fall off and in that last those last two ATOs that's what happened but I thought in the second half we were much better only uh, gave up one backdoor cut in the second half I can't remember how many offensive rebounds, one or two. Um, 20 assists on 25 baskets. Again, just trying to figure out how to be more efficient. Obviously, they were in zone the entire time. I understand that helps to some degree, but it also makes it more difficult to a degree because of the decisions that you have to make from the zone. So incredibly thankful for sure. That, that shirt you got on is pretty appropriate. The devil's in the deep. I always, um, <laughs> I always wear a quote shirt that I think is uh, apropos. And uh, our kids have picked up on it to the point that they're waiting to see what the shirt is. And um, How many do you bring with you? I, I, I pull about it and think about it. I only bring one. Okay. And uh, that's, uh, my grandmother used to say that. The devil's in the details. Uh, not not trying to make the devil more important than he really is, but I'm saying how important the details are to the recipe, how specific you have to be. And that's the game, right? The, the, that's uh, Coach Saban's process. It's the details. Can you follow the details? Our guys are incredibly smart. They know those details, but knowing's not enough, right? You have to do it. Well, that's what happened in the second half. You gave yes. up that 14-0 run, but then the first two ATOs, in the second half, you got off to good starts. You won both of those, executed better, forced some turnovers, and kind of got back into it. Yeah, I, um, I think um, we lost one ATO. I think it was the third, third one in one. the second half by three. I think uh, Coach Passner called a timeout with nine-something, and our guys were like, Coach, it's not the real ATO yet. Um, and we scored, and then they scored. But, yeah, I agree. Coach, getting into that recipe and some of the specificity for it, it seemed like your perimeter weave, particularly in the second half, really randomized your entry to the middle of the zone yeah. and kind of unlocked the offense. I had uh, two texts this week, Laser, from people that listen to you guys, and both of them said the exact same thing. They said you were really good <laughs> and that they <laughs> listen on an parents? app. You gave my parents your cell phone number? No, but your dad emails me, but he, he doesn't ever talk about you. But what is that, the app? How are they listening We've to We've got a couple of different apps. We've got the Hokie Sports app and also TuneIn app. Yeah, so anyway. So your listeners are growing. Yeah. I don't know if that would be the original 12 or not. But what I'm saying is is uh, I've never listened. So when I responded to the text, I go, well, they're both really good human beings but I have no idea if they're skilled at what they do. I've never listened to them, football or basketball. But Perimeter week. What, what you just said was exactly right because when their defense is set and you try to run the zone action, for the most part, they kind of already have a vibe for what's coming. Some of that false motion, we call it starburst because that's my favorite candy, <laughs> We call it starburst is just to kind of get us moving, get the ball moving, ball moving, and maybe get the zone 
in some level of movement before we try to get it into rotation. And how good was Ty tonight making six or 12 shots? His defense, you talk about that a lot. His defense kind of sometimes gets him going. Man, he was just dead on. I just, um, if, if there was uh, not a basketball game and it was uh, one person that you trust that no matter what happens is going to do all he can to help me, I'm picking Ty. And it's not because he can make a basket. Uh, he's just wired to do all he can to help. And obviously as a player, when he can shoot what we call a buzz shot, it's basket. He has been through a story unlike any that I've ever been around in my 25 years as a coach. And he understood the value of this game. He's smart enough. He's aware enough to understand what's at stake. But he's also mature enough to know he can't get outside of himself, but he has to be the best version of himself in order for us to have a chance. And I thought not only uh, was he making shots, I thought he was, we call him go get on the offensive mm -hmm. rebound. I thought he was in the mix time after time after time. <laughs> and um, he's deserving of what the stats show. Stat show, a game-high 20 points for Ty Outlaw. We'll hear from him a little bit later on in our post-game coverage. We continue with head coach Buzz Williams. And the stat sheet also shows a solid game for Chico, Isaiah Wilkins, but it doesn't show, I thought, one of those details that won this game for you tonight. Possession saved. He had three in a row on one possession. By my count, he saved five possessions. Yeah, I, I would say that's accurate. The one that was happening that he saved right here in front of you, I was screaming, jumping, can we please call timeout? Um, and then he almost got a six save down there when he dove on the floor. They were able to maintain possession. Uh, I think he's the second youngest Division One player. Uh, he's the only player that I've ever coached coming out of high school that never attended summer school. And uh, those four offensive rebounds and nine points and two assists, I know that was a career high minute. I just, I just thought he was impacting the game. I thought he was helping in every possible way. Uh, I thought he was getting tired, uh, but it was hard for me. I, I just kept telling him, <laughs> I'm praying for you. <laughs> That's what I was screaming at him. <laughs> hey, man, I'm praying for you. Hang in there. I know, I know another, another guy you've been praying for. Yeah, <laughs> all the time, God is good. And, then, you know, his dad's a bishop all the time. That's what he said. <laughs> I know another guy you've been praying for is PJ. Well, how nice is it to have him back on the floor and what he does and brings you? I mentioned it uh, to the team. Uh, obviously, I talked about Ty. I talked about KJ's eight assists and zero turnovers. I talked about Nikhil's seven assists. Um, I talked about Chico and what we just discussed. And I said, PJ, we're thankful to have you back regardless of what the stats show mm -hmm. and regardless of how many minutes you played. It was another live body. And I, I also think that that's why KJ had a little bit more playmaking because he had a little bit more energy and he's not having to be down there every single possession banging. I also thought that that helped our whole team and again it's the first time we've had this team in a game and it's the team that we're going to have on Saturday and we're going to have to be even better on Saturday than we were tonight. Last one for head coach Buzz Williams. Hokies win tonight 76-68. I got a couple of texts during the game as well, and they said, when the Hokies win this game, don't let coach get out of the postgame without letting you know <laughs> yeah. the Valentine's Day plans. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so, um, <laughs> got to hear it. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow I have to do sprint series, so that's two days before a game. I do a sprint series one day before a game. I box however many rounds it is for the upcoming ACC game. I'm way behind on pit. I've done nothing, so I've got to do some of it tonight. 2.15 is um, <laughs> two-day prep. 3.15 is uh, stretch recovery with Jackson Eddy. 4.30 is what we call uh, prep school. So uh, Baby plays a game, Corey said, at 5.30. Ooh. I like watching Baby play. Yeah, uh, but the hours are slipping by here. Yeah, and so... <laughs> 
maybe Corey and I can sit in the car and drive to Giles <laughs> County and back, and that will be great for me and great for her, just to be able to spend time alone. You don't have time to pick out your clothes. Come on. She, she, she's been helping. I, it's uh, Saturday at 430 may be as big a game as we've had since we've lived here. Without question. True. Pitt Panthers coming up. We'll, of course, <laughs> talk with Coach in the pregame to that. Coach, congratulations, my man. Happy Valentine's Day, and thank you for being Thank with you. Us. Thank Head you. Head Coach Buzz Williams. He